Hello there. Today I'm fortunate enough to be at Ornalaya, an estate in Tuscany in Bulgaria, whose first vintage was 1985. So one of the leading wines of Italy, one of the leading super Tuscan wines, a near neighbour of Sassicaia's, a wine very much of Bulgari, but has its own very distinct character. And here I'm trying their second wine, Lucier Nuave. And so while this is a second wine and clearly does contain some fruit that might otherwise have made its way into Ornalaya, some wine from younger vines and wines from barrels that might have been declassified, the wine has its own very distinct style. So whereas in Ornalaya, Cabernet Sauvignon will be the predominant grape variety, in Le Sierra Nuave, you'll find that Merlot tends to dominate. It's a wine made for slightly earlier drinking. It's a wine that, while it's still intended to age, is, is designed to have a little more elegance and perhaps perfume in terms of its style. This particular wine is 50% of Merlot, with 28% of Cabernet Sauvignon, and the balance is 11% of Cabernet Franc and 11% of Petit Verdot. Now, the 2022 vintage, which this is, was quite a hot vintage. They were fortunate that there'd been sufficient rain during the winter to renew the soil's water reserves. Because actually, the, the summer was both warmer than usual and dry. They had a period of something like 75 days without any rain in this vintage. So, fruit set and flowering had been very successful and warm, dry conditions meant that the vintage was relatively early. So picking started for the Merlot in the first fortnight of September and started on the 13th of, of September for the other three varieties, with the last grapes being harvested on the 1st of October. Now winemaking, as you can imagine here, is meticulous. It very much follows that that goes on for Horn and Lyre. Everything was picked by hand into shallow, they say 15 kilogram capacity trays, so nothing, no, none of the fruit could be squashed and damaged on its way to the winery. Sorting went on both by hand on tables, and also since 2016, they've been using an optical sorter here to remove any fruit that's damaged, underripe, or the wrong size. Fermentation took place in a combination of stainless steel and cement tanks, with fermentation temperatures being regulated to between 22 and 28 degrees C, so aiming not to be over-extractive. Fermentation was followed by a further period of maceration for 10 to 15 days, for the wines were put into barrel, firstly to undergo malolactic conversion and then to age. Of those barrels, 25% were new and 75% were older, predominantly second fill barrels. Now the wine aged in total for 15 months, but it was in barrel for 12 months, it was then blended and then went back into barrel for those last three months prior to bottling. After bottling, it's been in the cellars here prior to release for a further year. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we, and see what we make of it. First thing to say, it's a deep, dark wine. It's swirling it, it's got 14.5% alcohol, it's throwing tears on the glass fairly regularly. It's not quite opaque. There's a really quite reddish hue, it's not purple in terms of its colour there. So swirling it, let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? I think the aromatics of this are absolutely beautiful. There's a really lovely, soft, perfumed red cherry note. It's really quite high toned. Perfumed is the expression I'd use to describe it. Just so, so elegant. So let's have a taste. The palate is structured, but before the tannins cut in, there is again this beautiful, perfumed, lifted, almost floral red fruit. There's a lovely juiciness from very fresh acidity. I can feel freshness on the sides of my tongue. There's ever such a tiny hint of leafiness, mint, something like that. But it's just it's just the slightest trace of there. But yes, the freshness, the acidity is very lively on the palate. Now the alcohol on this, is, as I say, is 14.5%, but it doesn't feel fat or broad. The structure's keeping that nicely in check. There's a very definite cedriness to the mid palate, and, and there's certainly some grip, but it's not astringent, it's not drying my tongue out. And in fact, 
Sitting alongside that, there's a lovely raspberry note to the fruit, which, which is kept juicy by that lovely acidity. So the alcohol's not dominating it. What it's actually doing though, is it's drawing a little bit of the oak spice out there. So you've got sweet spices, cinnamon, nutmeg, those sorts of notes that are lasting very well. Having said that, the acidity is still there, the freshness is still there, and the red fruit perfumes, a juicy red fruit, and floral, raspberry, those sorts of notes, starting to come back. There's a very long, delicate finish. Now, I tried looking at the Wine Searcher Aggregated Critics score for this. We actually don't have any critics who's yet, who've yet scored this wine in the 2022 vintage. Overall, for all the vintages, the wine has a rating of 91, which I think this particular vintage is possibly hard done by in that case. I think maybe this is worthy of a 92 or possibly even a 93 points. There's enough concentration on the back palette to make me think that this wine will very happily age for 10 to 15 years. And yet the freshness and the liveliness of the fruit is actually making it seem quite approachable now. I mean, it's certainly got some grip and it will soften and smooth out with a couple of years time, but it's delicious and delightful now. So thank you very much for joining us. I do hope you've enjoyed the tasting. If you have, do please press the like button. If you'd like to watch more of these tastings, it'd be fantastic if you would sign up and follow our channel. That way you can set yourself an alert and be notified every time that we publish a new tasting. If you have friends you think might like to watch the video, we'd be delighted if you'd pass that on to them. That would be fantastic. I will leave a link in the comments box below to the Wine Searcher webpage for this wine so that you can find out where it's available near you, what its price is, and using that page, there's a lot of background information that we can give you about the wine as well. So hopefully that will help you make an informed decision if you're thinking about buying it. Most importantly though, do please try and find some time and come and join us for another tasting in the near future right now. Thanks again. Bye for now.